the Savior alone carry the cross for all of my day. He paid the cost, salvation complete. Now forever I'm free. Calvary covers it all. Any tragic event is later referred as the Black Day or Black Sunday, etc. But the Friday that Jesus was crucified, that Jesus was killed, was called as Good Friday and not as Black Friday. The reason is it was the day of transformation. Transformation of evil into good. Transformation of a tragedy into triumph. Transformation of sin into purity. And the best example, visible example of this fact of transformation is the cross itself. The cross was instituted or rather introduced by the Persians as a sign or a form of capital punishment which was later adopted by the Romans for the slaves or servants or for the non-Roman citizens which is a symbol of fear and shame but with Jesus the Calvary changed it all Today, cross is not a symbol of fear and shame. Rather, it is a sign of mercy. It is a sign of healing. It is a sign of sacrifice. And most of all, it is a sign of love. This is transformation that took place because of Jesus, the Lamb of God, hanging on the cross on Golgotha where they crucified him. My dear friends, a Russian former lady was once seen kissing the feet of Jesus. A communist leader saw this and asked her, Ma'am, could you not kiss the feet of Stalin, a communist leader? The lady said, yes, if Stalin gets crucified for me. Yes, my dear friends, Jesus was crucified for me and for you. Today's reading aptly explains the solemnity that we are celebrating. The first reading is one of the four suffering servant songs, widely interpreted as the passion and death of Jesus. The second reading speaks of Christ's passion and death as a source of eternal salvation for all humankind. And in the gospel we have heard or we can read the John's vivid description of the passion and crucifixion of Jesus. Jesus' death was both historical and a divine necessity. It has become for us 
a powerful symbol of total surrender and trust in God. On the other hand, Jesus' fidelity to his mission of overthrowing the unjust structures, untold discriminations made his death inevitable. Hence, it's a historical necessity. While on the one hand, it is part of God's incarnational plan of salvation. Jesus had to undergo the sufferings, death to liberate us, which often is forgotten that it was not when Lord Jesus was preaching or when he was performing miracles or teaching that he saved the world. It was when he was seemingly helpless and totally abandoned on the cross there in the midst of unspeakable agony, anguish and intolerable pain, Christ wrought our redemption. He redeemed us. Yes, my dear friends. Once Mother Teresa was cleaning the wounds of a leper, when one government official who saw that told her, Mother, I would not do this work even if you pay me 10,000 rupees. And the mother said, even I will not do it if you give me even a crore. Then he asked, then why are you doing it? Then Mother Teresa replied, I do it for the one who was crucified for me on the cross. My dear friends, a modern theologian Karl Rahner says, Christianity is not a religion, but the person of Christ Jesus. Yes, it's true. If you claim to be a Christian, you are not following a religion, but the person of Jesus. His way, and His way is the way of the cross, who endured suffering and redeemed us. Most of us wear cross around our neck. We should question ourselves. Is it only an ornament or identification? Or does it have a deeper meaning? Yes, surely, my dear friends, the cross has a deeper meaning. We Christians, our behavior, our language, our way of going about, the way we present ourselves should manifest Jesus' way of life. And it means bearing witness in given situation. Cross has two aspects, vertical and horizontal. Vertically, cross unites us with God and horizontally, cross unites us with the world and with one another. Today, we pray very specially for the Universal Church. Today, as we celebrate this Good Friday, the day Jesus was crucified, Jesus gave himself for us. Let us pray for the entire universe.